Living in Capitol Hill or First Hill right for you? Let's find out. It is not right for everyone, but for some, it is a very cool place to be. We're going to dive into the whole Capitol Hill dynamic right here on this video. My name is Emily Cressy. I'm a local real estate agent in the Seattle area, and my goal with this channel is to help you get an idea for what it's like to move to Seattle, find the neighborhood that's right for you, and buy your dream home where you're going to be happy long term. I am not a slam bam, thank you ma'am type of realtor. I really want to do the research, the background education to help you have all the information you need to make a good decision, including walking you through it going out on your behalf to do video tours of neighborhoods or homes that you're interested in. And as you plan your relocation, please consider me a tool to help you in that research process. The channel here is just the tip of the iceberg of what I do. I really want to meet with you on Zoom or whatever it is and help you plan your transition to our beautiful city here in the Evergreen State. Let's talk about Capitol Hill. I actually had some neighbors, some clients a couple of years ago that wanted me to really show them the most trendy, hot, and hip neighborhoods, and Capitol Hill was on that list. So this is an area that's going to be a more expensive uh, point of entry, and it's also going to be fairly urban, which is not you know for everyone. So I want to make that clear up front going in. But if it is right for you, a lot of people are really happy here and really love the dynamic. So we're just, we're going to talk about it. Let's just go. Let's just do it. So zooming out, I always like to get you oriented before we get too deep into the weeds here. So where is Capitol Hill? This is a neighborhood in Seattle. Uh, directly across from downtown. So you might notice that in Seattle, a lot of things are called a hill. <laughs> There's Queen Anne Hill over here, Capitol Hill over here, Seattle itself is on a giant hill. But this here in downtown Seattle, this is where all the big skyscrapers are and everything like that. And then over here is Puget Sound, which is ocean water. This opens up to uh, the Pacific Ocean and uh, we have a lot of people, you know, coming in here to our ports to deliver, you know, container ships from China and that type of thing. And then we also have ferry traffic. So you can see these dotted lines of ferries coming into the downtown, like going out to these different islands. Bainbridge Island is kind of a suburb of Seattle, but there are also all sorts of islands, San Juan Islands, other places over here on the peninsula. The Seattle story and Puget Sound story is very much connected to the water. And as you can see here, this kind of square rectangle area is what's considered Capitol Hill. Luxury real estate for the most part. And then on this side, it's kind of like you crest the hill and start going down this way toward Lake Washington. And you're going to have more water views and more luxury real estate over there. So this whole area is good. But in Capitol Hill in particular, you have two things that are really cool. One is you can have great views of downtown Seattle. So if you're the type of person that wants to be like up in your condo or your apartment, like looking out the window at night and seeing the lights of the city, this is a great place to be. And in some instances, you can also see out over to Puget Sound, okay? So you can see water as well. And then the other thing that you get is that you're basically within walking distance to downtown Seattle. So I don't know how long you like to walk or whether that's realistic for you, but whether you're taking the bus or an Uber or you are walking or biking or something like that, you could use a fold up electric bike, I don't know, but you, you do have good proximity to the city, which is really nice for you as a commuter. You're not gonna be spending a lot of time stuck on the freeway in stop and go traffic. So that's a big plus. The downside is that we have the most crime and the most homelessness problems here in downtown Seattle. And because this is so close, you can get a lot of that kind of leaking over into this area. And then in addition, this is right by the freeway. So it says I-5. This is the freeway that goes from Canada to California. This is the main drag. And so you have that kind of right in your backyard in Capitol Hill and a lot of views 
especially views of the city, you're going to be looking right over the freeway there. So depending on how your setup is, that may or may not bother you a lot. There may or may not be some noise and that type of thing. So let's zoom in on, oh, and then First Hill, for those who are wondering, is this neighborhood here to the south? Some people call it Pill Hill, and that's not because the, it's full of drug addicts. <laughs> I'm not saying whether or not it is full of drug addicts. I think there are some free needle giveaways and things for safe drug use that might be located in this proximity. But the reason that's called Pill Hill is because there are a lot of hospitals in this area. So I actually did another video uh, that was focusing on an Airbnb that was here that had actually had a lot of tenants and people living there who were residents. You know, I'm here to do like a three month stint shadowing the surgeon or traveling nurses or that type of thing. People who wanted to be in the proximity of the hospital. So Virginia Mason, Harborview, big hospitals in the area are here. And so if you're in the medical field, there are a lot of opportunities here. When I was in high school, I went to a hoity-toity private high school that attracted people from the, throughout the city. It wasn't just the kids in my neighborhood. And one of my friends lived here in Capitol Hill, and his dad was a dermatologist. So go figure. Like the people that I know from there are in the medical profession. And what we used to do in high school at night 20 years ago was we would go walk around on Broadway, which is the main street down here. And it has a lot of different like eclectic record stores and bars and uh, kind of, I think we would go to like a Mongolian grill buffet type of a thing where you would pay eight dollars at that time and like fill up your plate with noodles and vegetables and fancy sauces and things like that and it was a good good place for teenagers to eat <laughs> they could get a lot of food for cheap and uh we weren't as worried about calories at that point in time also at this end is a community college down here so my husband did work here briefly at one point and he did not care for it. He said apparently like more than once students or somebody would call in like a bomb threat on the day of a test or something like that. And so they would have to evacuate the building and then, for, oh, they couldn't do the test that day because you know, other things were going on with the police. <laughs> so that was, was eventful, but he would walk around here. And I think Capitol Hill is known for having a, a lot of nightlife. So there are a lot of bars and mom and pop types of stores for the the urban you know people of different tastes in their clothing and that type of a thing so students and people that like to be kind of flamboyant there's all a lot of options for you here um, you know cool haircut places there are places my husband's gone on corporate events here for like axe throwing for like drinking beer and going bowling and, and different things like that. So there's a lot of that kind of nightlife bar scene clubs type of stuff here on Capitol Hill that I don't see as much of that happening at night in downtown Seattle. I feel like downtown Seattle is a lot more corporate. They are trying to build condominiums there. They have a lot of condominiums going in. They're having a little bit of a challenge selling them because there are so many condominiums going in compared to like a lot of people started working from home and didn't want to buy downtown Seattle. And then the homeless people got more entrenched. And so downtown Seattle hasn't been a super popular destination lately, but Capitol Hill has a great mix of different types of homes. It's mostly lower rise condominiums and apartment buildings. Um, they have some really cool, like hundred year old plus Victorian homes that are just mansions some of them get torn down with an even bigger mansion built there some of them are restored you can buy them for like a million dollars plus and especially like back here they're a lot more it feels more residential and near this park the park let's see is famous for having this big conservatory there and this is actually where my sister went to get her wedding pictures taken so they did some pictures inside the conservatory as well as outside on the lawn and everything like that. So if you want kind of that park-like oasis, you can come here, you can walk around. Um, Seattle Asian Art Museum has some stuff here. And so a lot of people I see like families with strollers, they're heading this way 
because that's where they like to go with their kids. I've also seen people here, like when I was there with those other clients, we went out to brunch, not brunch. We just went out to coffee, like at a local mom and pop coffee shop. And it was absolutely packed, you know, mid morning on the weekend, lots of people there having little coffee and a little muffin or some kind of a a treat of some kind. And it looked like a very popular type of um, place to go. A lot of people ask me about community and meeting your neighbors and kind of having that sense of belonging and knowing people. And this Capitol Hill community does seem to allow for that because uh, number one, there's a lot of walking around. I find in Capitol Hill in particular, you can park there. There is some degree of you know available parking on the street, but it's not so free and easy that people just jump in their car to do things. This is more like you can roll out of your house and take the bus to downtown Seattle or somewhere else. You can walk to somewhere, you can walk, walk to the corner coffee shop, walk to the park. So I think a lot of what comes down to um, having that sense of community is having a walkable neighborhood. And do people choose to leave their homes without the protection of a car so that you can see each other, you can smile, you can wave, you can chat as you you know pace each other on the way to the park, or I've seen you here at the park before those types of things. Oh, I also had a great time here. We went, <laughs> I think my mom had read about it in the paper, but we went for my sister's birthday one time, just like a ladies day out to uh, this place that it was like a Mexican hot chocolate type of place. So they had all sorts of different fancy hot chocolates with cinnamon in it or hot peppers in it. The one that we got that I think was the favorite amongst us was one with Colby cheese in it. So maybe cheddar jack cheese. It had little cubes of cheese and you would drop it in your hot coffee and then it, or your hot cocoa and it would kind of melt and then you could spoon it out and it would be all like stretchy, like a grilled cheese sandwich or something. It was really a fun, like, oh, this is interesting. And the people were really from Mexico and it was very cool and not something that you would normally just like find in the suburbs. It's more like, hey, I'm out with my friends. We want to find something to do that we can post on Instagram or tell, talk about at work later. And so here's a cool experiential type of place. And I will say that that place did have a glass door and it had the glass door was boarded up. So it had been broken, broken into, broken, whatever, you know, a couple of times. And so they were having, you know, while at the same time having a cool restaurant, having a little challenge with urban blight and that type of a thing too. So overall, great place to come. You have to be a little bit streetwise here because there are going to be randos walking around, but also that's part of what makes it beautiful is that you do have the chance to meet other people in your neighborhood and your community. And I think some of that depends on like, are you walking during the day? Are you walking at night? Are you walking alone? Are you walking where there are bars? And like, what's we always have to use our situational awareness and kind of find out what the right vibe for us is. But on a beautiful Saturday morning, it's a great place to go walking, great uh, community transportation. And as you move south, similar idea, you're going to be close to, there's the Seattle University right there. You're going to be close to the hospitals over here. But then like I had some other people that were looking for an investment property and they had been looking at some condos here. And I said, the beautiful view down toward the water, like, let's just go down. I think we were here. We probably went down on Yesler. And then we were in Pioneer Square, which is one of the historic areas of downtown Seattle. It has this cool blue and red office building that where my dad used to rent office space as a lawyer. It has a, a totem pole representing a Native American history. It has um, the underground Seattle tour where you can actually go beneath the sidewalks of Seattle and you have a tour and you learn about the Seattle history from, you know, the 1900s and the early, early days of settling the city. So very cool area, but definitely like a lot of alcoholics hanging out, lying on benches, like not the kind of place that you want your kids to go without holding hands. So, and that's kind of where they tend to congregate is down here in this historic area. So there's the beneath the streets kind of underground Seattle tour, Smith Tower, 
is this historic, used to be the tallest building. <laughs> and you're close right here to the baseball field and the football field. So, I mean, there's a lot of action going on in this area and you just have to be aware of it. When I took these clients down here, I was like, oh yes, you know, we're close. Here's Pike Place Market over here, famous, you know, flying fish and all of that. And as we were getting into Pioneer Square, the police were out, they stopped traffic. There was a um, parade going on with about 30 people in it. That was, I believe like Native American people and their allies protesting that Seattle was built on stolen ground or something like that. So, I mean, there's always, <laughs> there's always something going on and you never just know exactly what you're gonna get, but that's kind of what makes it fun. And if you see yourself as the type of person who's out, you know, out and about grabbing coffee, getting your nails done, going to the hair place, you've got your umbrella, you're walking to the park, you're jogging, you're going on the bus. All of these things can happen in Capitol Hill. It's a very popular area and I think it will continue to be successful in the future, especially as our new mayor is working on cleaning up the city and the homelessness and the crime kind of associated with the downtown Seattle area in particular. And finally, let's just take a look at what kind of homes we can find in this area. So if you are thinking about buying something here, you can kind of get an idea of what's available. So I'm including First Hill in this just to give us a little bit more perspective. So let's take a look at the results. Okay, here are the results. So let's just take a look at price ranges. So on the low end, you're going to find a one bedroom, 600 square foot condominium or co-op. Cooperatives are fairly common around here. And so you're going to live in a, an apartment type of unit and have your own space. You're going to have a homeowners association and have a really great location. And the HOA on this, just to give you some perspective, is $605. So that does add, especially in that price range, it adds significantly to the overall holding cost. Um, looks like we have about six pages of results here. So on the high end, we're seeing something at 8 million. We gotta see it, it's a penthouse. Uh, there are those Seattle views I was telling you about. Look at that gorgeous interior. This looks like a penthouse of another condominium building. Uh, and the HOA dues on this, 10000 a month. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, that I guess it's just it's not for me. <laughs> Let's look at the next level down, a little more realistic. We see lots of stuff in the $1 million range. So lots of condos. I can't tell. This might be a single family home, kind of a, a townhouse style vertical build. It looks like it may not be detached there. Let's look at a couple other options. Here's a non-detached home, three bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square feet, 1.2 million. Uh, this looks like a three bedroom condo on the 22nd floor of the building here. So lovely. And we're seeing a 2,000 a month HOA on that. These downtown HOAs tend to have a lot more expense to them than like something I would see in Linwood or Everett north of Seattle. Uh, let's look right in the middle price point, kind of this average here around 500,000 or so. You're gonna be able to get a two bedroom condo for 925 square feet for, this is priced at 550 at the moment. So you're not going to get as much of a view, not as much of a premium location, not as much space, but certainly more than adequate. This has an $800 a month HOA. Next one looks similar. Beautiful building, interiors, nice floor. On these condominiums, you really have to take a look at what's going on with the homeowners association. Not only what are the dues right now, but how well are they maintaining the building and if they've been putting off things like a roof or if they haven't been saving up enough for those things can really come back to bite everyone at some point with a special assessment. This one is only $600 a month HOAs. We go residential and not condo. We go from 140 to 26 searches. So not as many options there, but we go to the middle of this list. Oh, nice sunset view there. That's over the Olympics. 
newer construction here. Oh, and this is something eclectic. I like this. Look at that kind of gingerbread, lots of paint, a little deck. They have a lot of these garages out by the road with a flat roof. So you can make that into a deck or patio space. This is very kind of typical, like this era of, of homes. Let's see when this was built. Yeah, 1904. Updated. Beautiful. So that gives you kind of an idea of what these houses are like. We have old houses, we have new construction, and we have condominiums at every price point. Just make sure you take a look at the Homeowners Association. Thanks so much for watching this video with me. I hope that gives you a little bit more of an idea of what to expect down in Capitol Hill and some sense of whether or not this is going to be right for you. So let me know if you have further questions. You can write them in the comments. I would love that. You can look me up on my website, homeproassociates.com. All my contact information is there. Or you can just keep watching and subscribe to the videos. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.